everybody, hope you all are doing well, and welcome back to Whiskey Wanders. And today, in honor of every American across the country right now, lacing up their new balances, packing up their unrealistic expectations of a service culture, and heading out to Europe <laughs> this summer, today we are doing a wander from a duty-free with a surprisingly good selection of whiskey and you know, they saved our butts in the Revolutionary War. So <laughs> today we're going to do a whiskey wander at the duty-free section of the Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, where we see a throwback bourbon, uh, the Woodford Reserve Master's Collection Batch Proof 128.3. That's from 2021, but being sold in 2023. And the habitual travel offering from Habiki, the Master's Select at the lowest price that I think I have ever seen. And a great whiskey out of Ardbeg, the Corvecchian. And really, so, so much more. Now, if you like these videos, uh, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, if you like the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, the drink throughs, and really all the amazing stuff that we got cooking up for you, and we have tons of amazing stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel grow. And again, we are so, so thankful for that. But also you get updates when our newest videos come out on Sundays and <laughs> sometimes in between. All right, now let's get down to the video. All right, so for today's whiskey check, let's do one real quick, uh, get a glass here. Today, I'm gonna be enjoying something a little European. Let's see what we got. You know, I wish I would have brought back some of the, the Parisian bourbon, the Bellevue or whatever it is, but I just couldn't pull the trigger on it. Uh, let's do some Ben Romac 10. This one always surprises me about how good it really is every time I try it. And then I forget, and then I come back to it and be like, oh, this is pretty good. So let's see if we can get a pop. Turn the bottle on both sides. See if we can get a pop. Hey, not too bad, not too bad. And get a little juice here. Oh yeah. And it's whiskey. Because really, honestly, <laughs> let's face it. You can never truly drink too much of it. You can only just drink it too fast. Cheers. Oh, that is good. Good job, Ben Mac. All right, so today let's start this wander off uh, with one of the favorite whiskeys from the wander. And I'm really sort of kicking myself for not buying it. It just logistically didn't really work out uh, while we're at CDG because we were on the way out of Europe, um, which is going to be this Woodford Reserve Master Collection Batch Proof 128.3 from 2021. Now, when I saw it, I actually thought it was the 2023 release, which I think is 124 or somewhere around there. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I thought it was the 2023 release. So I figured, oh, you know what? I'll pick it up when I get back into the States. But it turns out it was a 2021 release. So I don't know if they were holding it on for a while or people just aren't buying it. <laughs> I'm not really sure if the bourbon lovers had found it at the CDG. Um, but they had that 2021 version, which, uh, you know, is not really available here. Um, if I had realized that, I probably would have found a way to bring it home. Just <laughs> stick it under the shirt. <laughs> Anyways, on a yearly basis, uh, Woodford Reserve puts out a line of bourbons that are kind of their premium bottle lines. They're not too, too expensive, but they're also not nearly as uh, economic as the standard Woodford Reserve. In fact, we have a couple of the other ones. We have the uh, 119.8 and the 118.4. So again, adding this one to the collection would have been a great, uh, a great addition because, you know, we'd have a more fuller set. But, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the way life goes. Um, the one specifically that we see here at CDG uh, has a mash bill of 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. And it is, of course, an allocated yearly release. Additionally, they do a proofing that is uh, unique to each of the batches, as we can see with these ones, which means that once it runs out, you know, once it's done, then it's done. There isn't any more left. Also, additionally, this line uh, does have a soft spot in my heart because it was one of the first uh, high-end bourbons that I actually bought. I think it was this one, the 118, uh, where I had bought it at Costco. And I remember very distinctly <laughs> grabbing it before a lady had run up to it to try to get it. I guess she'd probably been sent there by her husband. And having that one weird, awkward moment where she's like, hey, do you guys have any of these whiskeys? Asking the salesperson and me standing there with the last two of them. <laughs> Definitely a, a, a very, very kind of awkward turtle moment. Now, the price that we see here at CDG is actually not that great of a price uh, at uh, 135 euros, which comes out to $147.15 in USD right now. Uh, because uh, when it is in stock at BevMo, you can find it for $129.99 or even at our local liquor purveyor who has it for $128.30. But uh, that, of course, is when it's in stock and it's not in stock. 
Uh, usually this stuff does end up going up pretty quickly, and I have been having the darndest time finding the old releases this side of the Maginot line. That being said, if we did buy this one at CDG, uh, at the Duty Free, uh, we would have overpaid by about $18.85 or 13.96% compared to the price of our local liquor barn. But you know what? Sometimes you got to pay a little bit over uh, for that availability. So yeah. Now the ABV on this one obviously is at 128.3 proof or an ABV that comes out to 64.15%, which is a very, very respectable ABV. Definitely something nice to cap off an evening. And, and uh, the tasting notes mention that it is a cherry bomb. It has uh, flavors of like red hots, the cinnamon red hots, kind of like the, the red versions of the Mike and Ikes, I guess. Um, a strong sweetness, charred oak, and pink marshmallow flavors. I always thought those pink ones tasted different. The tasting notes for it came out to 89 points out of 100 on average, which I think is probably pretty justified given my experience with the other two that we have had. And, uh, you know, in this case, unfortunately, it was... A pass, which I do regret. Uh, I think that it was necessary, but I do regret. And also, when you see when we do our Euro trip haul, oh boy, is it going to make a whole lot of sense that we didn't really have too much room left over, and there was nothing that we were going to be able to uh, throw overboard to bring this one on. So, just a set of unfortunate circumstances. Either way, that is the Woodford Reserve Batch 128.3. So next up is a Japanese whiskey out of the house of Suntory that celebrated their uh, 100th anniversary this year. Happy birthday, Suntory. That is slightly an upscale version of the pedestrian version uh, that we see at Costco and at Total Wine and at BevMo's and at, uh, you know, the LAX Duty Free. Uh, but in this CDG, we see the Hibiki Harmony Master Select. This, of course, is the pedestrian one. And they have a whole variety that you usually see that are travel only. Uh, this one as well. And uh, the Harmony Blossom one as well. Those are all pretty nice. This one is slightly different. Now, Hibiki Harmony in general is sort of the more... I guess we would call them like freewheeling line of the Suntory catalog because uh, there is the Yamazaki and the Hakushus, uh, especially the ones with the age statements that tend to be a very strict and only have slight changes to them year over year. But the Hibiki is going to be the black sheep. It is very, very popular. <laughs> I like it too. But it gets, uh, you know, crazy bottle designs and it, it has kind of wide ranges and variations within the blending, uh, especially for the ones that are non-age statements. Uh, so, you know, it just gets a little crazy and it doesn't have that stringent criteria that we have for the Yamazaki and the Hakushu that are expected to be almost all squared away and always almost exactly the same and consistent every single time you drink it. Those things just don't seem to be imposed upon the Hibiki line. But this Hibiki Harmony Master Select that we see at CDG, uh, at least for Suntory, is one of those flings where they look to the full warehouse of the whiskey that they have. They pick out specific bottles to blend them together to make enough of a divergence from the standard Harmony uh, to make it a unique offering and also, most importantly, <laughs> to make it more marketable as a separate product, especially in that travel era where uh, people spend stupid money for stupid things, <laughs> myself included. Now the price that we see uh, the Hibiki Harmony Master Select here at CDG Duty Free, and the reason really why I included it in this one is because of the fact it is the lowest price that I have ever seen it at, pretty much anywhere, at 91 euros, or that comes out to $99.19, which is well below what we saw recently at the LAX Duty Free, I guess on the way in, um, where it was $140. So that means if we did end up buying it at CDG, uh, we would have saved $40 or 81 cents, or 44.85% uh, over the LAX duty-free prices, which is honestly quite good. The ABV uh, on the Hibiki Master Select kind of stays in line with the standard Centauri ABV at 43%. Uh, you can see here that the um, Hibiki Normal one is 43%. Uh, the Hibiki um, Master, whichever one this one is with the color bottle, also 43%. Uh, and then the cherry blossom also 43%. So it definitely sticks with the family kind of line as far as ABV, and that comes out to 86 proof, by the way. And you know, the thing about Harmony is that you're not really gonna go into this expecting to have a big, bold ABV. Mainly the selling point for Hibiki, rather than, uh, you know, having that mouth burn, is gonna be a more harmonious palette uh, that you get, which is it, it truly very enjoyable. It's very well balanced. That being said, the tasting notes on it mention things like light flavors of vanilla, honey, orange citrus, oak, nutmeg, and a bitter 
chocolate with a green tea, kind of all mingling around there in a delightfully balanced uh, level, but also in a way that amplifies the palate. So that's pretty good, right? They all work together and kind of collaborate. <laughs> now, the review scores that we found on this one, uh, the Master Select, are actually pretty rough. <laughs> so it's not exactly the favorite of people. And I think that one of the reasons might be because it is super duper overpriced and sort of obviously a money grab. Um, so for what you're getting, it's just definitely maybe not worth it, um, at least according to the whiskey commentary yet. But it did get 82 points out of 100. So yeah, there's that. Now, overall, even at the lowest price, we're seeing this one at CDG, um, you know, when it just came down to space, right? We didn't have the space for it. Uh, and also we have a lot of the other versions of Hibiki that we're kind of saving our Hibiki money for, uh, you know, maybe a Hibiki 21 or 30 or a 2100 anniversary. Ooh, <laughs> just get tingles thinking about it. Um, so yeah, so, uh, there's nothing else that we would be willing to toss overboard to replace with a Hibiki Harmony, even, uh, you know, saving 44% of it. So uh, that one was a pass. All right, so last up for today is a whiskey that I have had my eye on for quite some time, but it's one of those things that is always so present, basically everywhere at all times at a reasonable cost, um, you know, and it, it, that it doesn't make sense to buy it <laughs> overseas and haul it back. Um, it gets really, really good views uh, from all the Ardbeg fans, of which I am one of them, and it's sort of one of the darling uh, Ardbeg lines, which is this Ardbeg Corvecchian. Now, the Corvecchian is supposed to be one of Ardbeg's most peaty and most meaty whiskeys in a standard line. And I think that's how the wife describes me after a couple of cigars. <laughs> and really, if we had seen this bottle on the way in to Paris, I probably would have just picked one up to have it uh, throughout the trip, uh, you know, so you can enjoy it on the Eurostar and let the whole cabin wonder if <laughs> something's on fire. It is originally named after a famous whirlpool in Scotland. It is aged in ex-bourbon and ex French oak cask. Um, it is not allocated by any stretch of the imagination. Like I said, it can be found really anywhere all the time, but what it does got going for it is that extra peaty and meatiness, and also an above average ABV in comparison to a lot of its Isla Island mates, uh, mainly Lagavulin and Lafroy. Now the price that we see it here at the CDG duty free is at 89 euros, well, which comes out to $97.01 USD, which kind of splits the cost uh, between the total wine cost at $119.99 and Bevmo, who typically gets beat out by total wine, but not all the time, who has it for $93.99. So it means that if we did buy the Corvecchian at CDG, then we've overpaid by $3.02 over the Bevmo price or 3.39%. But I I guess when we weigh it out, there's no tax on it versus the tax in LA, which is 10% or so. So, you know, it probably all level out, but uh, it just it just wouldn't justify uh, bringing it back. Now, the ABV on the Corvecchian is a very healthy 57.1% or 114.2 proof, which is definitely what I like to see with a whiskey that's going to be so heavily peated. And the palate and the tasting notes mention things like flavors of soy sauce, grilled meats, silky mouthfeel, salty, smoky, and sweetness, um, which again, all sound pretty amazing. It sounds like, uh, like eating some yakitori, but in a whiskey form. The point score that I could find on it uh, gave it an average of 88 points out of 100, which seems pretty justified, at least from the tasting notes on it, because I haven't tried it yet. Um, but again, this one was going to be a pass for the same reasons as all the other ones were a pass, um, because I know I can find it stateside uh, for even a little bit less, uh, and also it just doesn't make sense to lug it back 10 hours through multiple time zones uh, when I could just kind of deliver it and have it uh, delivered to the house in under an hour. So uh, this one was also going to be a pass. All right, so that's it for today's Whiskey Wanders in Paris Airport at the CDG, the Charles de Gaulle Duty Free. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you did, if you like all of our videos, whether it's the Wanders or the hauls or the reviews or the unbottlings, the unboxings and the drink throughs and really all the amazing stuff that we got cooking up for you. And we have tons of amazing stuff cooking up for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel to grow, uh, which again, we are so, so, so thankful for. I also like to think it's good for your whiskey mojo. It pleases the whiskey gods. Maybe they will bring some whiskey luck down upon you. And also, you know, you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. Now, before I go, just remember, if you do find a whiskey that you love, really wherever you are in the world, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. Maybe not in this case, but it might even be me. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. I'm out and adios.